OK, so the third and final differentiation rule is known as the quotient rule. And it deals with quotients of functions. So, in other words, functions of the form f of x over g of x, where we clearly have one function divided by another. So, types of functions that we'd be looking at here to use the quotient rule. I mean, you could use y equals, um, you could use the quotient rule for something like y equals x plus 2 cubed, if you wanted to. I mean, that's a fraction. But uh, I would also be thinking, well, you could write that as x plus 2 to the minus 3. And that would actually be easier to write and, and complete using the chain rule, OK, to differentiate it that way. However, there are ones that will be easier to use the quotient rule. So if I modified this slightly and write it, wrote it as x over x plus 2 cubed, then certainly uh, the quotient rule will be easier in the long run to do that rather than um, writing it as, say, x times x plus 2 to the minus 3 and doing the product rule. OK, so I'll come back to that in a moment, OK, because at this point there's usually some convincing needs to go ahead as to why it might be preferable to use the quotient rule rather than the product rule. I'll go through that example at the end uh, of this video. Uh, another example uh, might be something like y equals um, sine x over cosine of x. So to differentiate tan. Um, so as long as you have a fraction uh, of functions, you can use the quotient rule. And because of this, you might be thinking, well, actually, because I could write it on one line, I could always just use the product rule. And the example I'm going to go through I'm going to try and convince you otherwise. Okay? So what is the rule? How does it work? Well, the way that it works is that we start at the bottom and you work your way up. Okay? So you start with g of x and you multiply that by the derivative of the top, f of x. So it's f prime of x times g of x. The bottom times the derivative of the top. Then take away the top times the derivative of the bottom. So the order here matters. With the product rule, it looks very similar to the product rule. With that, it didn't matter because it was a plus. But because there's a minus in here, the order matters. So you must remember that you start from the bottom, you work your way up, then it's top to bottom. Okay? So bottom times the bottom times true to the top. Take away the top times the derivative of the bottom. And we're not quite done because we've got to then divide it by the bottom squared. OK? That is the quotient rule. And it will look, if this is the first time you've ever seen it, as something quite ghastly. OK? However, it isn't really too bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this example now. OK? And what we're going to do, y equals x over x plus 2 cubed. OK? Um, now, if you were going to use the product rule, which you're perfectly a rights to do, OK, you would first of all write it like that. And so we're looking at the product of these two functions. So dy by dx would be the first times by the derivative of the second, which will be minus 3 x plus 2 to the minus 4, plus the second times the derivative of the first. OK? So we get minus 3x, x plus 2 to the minus 4, plus x plus 2 to the minus 3. And then, of course, we want to make this simpler for ourselves, so we want to put it back into factorised form. So we would factor out the larger of the two, OK, because of the, um, sorry, the, the most negative of the two. 
um, in order to aid the factorization here. So we'd have x plus 2 to the minus 4, and then we're going to have the minus 3x, and here we'd have to have another x plus 2. So then we get x plus 2 to the minus 4, um, and we get 2 take away 2x. Um, so yeah, I could then factor out the 2 if I wanted to, but I've got this 2 minus 2x over x plus 2 to the 4. Okay, so that would be using the product rule. If, on the other hand, you use the quotient rule, then you've got the bottom times by the derivative of the top, which is just 1, take away the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is 3 lots of x plus 2 squared, all over the bottom squared. You cancel an x plus 2 squared from the top, cancel an x plus 2 squared there, and there, so that becomes 4. So you've got x plus 2, take away 3x over x plus 2 to the 4, and so you get 2, uh, take 2x over x plus 2 to the 4. So, same thing. However, this is much easier to work with because we don't have to deal with any of the nastier factorising. And this, I couldn't really have made this much simpler to really work with as an example. Okay? So, in other words, they kind of get more complicated than that. So, my advice would be to avoid trying to use the product rule in examples where the quotient rule will be better suited to it, okay? So just be aware of that when you're working through problems.